Buongiorno a tutti e buongiorno a chi è collegato. Mi sentite bene? Saluto gli speaker. Buongiorno. 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 Sono qui con noi Gianluca Dettori, Maria Cristina Falvella, Enrico Resmini e siamo in attesa che si colleghi anche Giampaolo Mantella. Abbiamo avuto qualche problema tecnico, adesso siamo qui e comincerei presentando i nostri, presentando i nostri speaker. Maria Cristina Falvella, Presidente della Fondazione Amalgi, e Gianluca Dettori, Presidente della SGR Primo Miglio, Enrico Resmini, Amministratore Delegato del Fondo Nazionale Innovazione CDP Venture Capital. Buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Vuoi sentirmi? Noi, no. ti sentiamo. Noi ti sentiamo. Io ti sento. Per Luca sei in mute, non posso sentirti se parli. Adesso riuscite a sentirmi, è giusto una prova? Io ti sento, Carlo. C'è un eco di ritorno tra me. Riproviamo. Sorry for the audience, we are trying to testing uh, if somebody will arrive. We are, we are waiting for uh, Mr. Manzella, under secretary al uh, Minister of Economic Development. And of course, also we are trying to, to fix uh, uh, static noise uh, we, we are hearing. Uh, uh. Gianluca, tu sei risulti. I can, I can hear you very clearly. The person who are not speaking should uh, close the microphone. Ok. We lost... Uh... Ok, Gianluca. We are all connected. Yes. Ok, and can you hear me? So we can use the microphone once. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning, everybody, and sorry for delay. We, we are waiting. Uh, uh, we are still waiting, uh, Mr. Giampaolo Manzella, uh, who will join us uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, Giampaolo Manzella is the undersecretary with the Minister of Economic Development with, uh, with a focus on. Uh, space economy, innovation, uh, tech transfer, etc. So it's very important to hear from him uh, uh, which are the programs, uh, which are the visions uh, on which uh, our government and generally speaking our establishment is, uh, is looking uh, and uh, looking forward to understand their strategies and plans uh, for the near and the, and the future. Uh, let me introduce now um, Our speakers, Maria Cristina Falvella, Chairman of Fondazione Amaldi. Good morning, Maria Cristina. Thank you for coming. Enrico Resmini, uh, CEO, Chief Executive Officer at CDP Venture Capital, Fondo Nazionale Innovazione. Good morning, Enrico. Good morning. And Gianluca Dettori, uh, long time uh, venture capital, one of uh, the outstanding uh, players in, in our ecosystem. Good morning. Good morning, Gianluca. 
So uh, I just uh, just a, a, a short introduction. My name is Salvo Mizzi. Actually, I'm the current director of uh, Fondazione Neatec, that is a foundation uh, established by the Ministry of Economic Development to manage uh, uh, a high impact uh, fund on technology transfer, uh, focused on, uh, let's say, hard technologies, deep tech, uh, including, of course, uh, also aerospace and new space economy. We will, uh, we will look uh, better at details uh, during the day. Uh, I, will, mm, I will ask to Maria Cristina Falvella uh, to explain to us kindly the role of Fondazione Amaldi in the space economy landscape and uh, introduce herself uh, to the audience. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Thank you very much, uh, Salvo, for, uh, for having organized uh, this panel and uh, uh, for, um, for uh, um, setting uh, such uh, an outstanding uh, panel. La, uh, first of all, uh, I want uh, to thank everybody uh, for, uh, for uh, this participation. I'm very uh, pleased to join this, me, uh, this uh, panel and to uh, tell you something about uh, the Eduardo Maldi Foundation experience. Eduardo Maldi Foundation, uh, born in 2017, after a commitment of Italian Space Agency and private research consortium Ipazia to set up the model, uh, the, a new model for uh, private research and uh, to technology transfer from and to space sector in order to leverage space investment as a tool for increasing uh, the competitiveness and the sustainability of uh, national industrial sector and for maximizing the social, eco uh, social economic benefit from space applied research. The initial idea was to duplicate what happened in Germany a few decades ago with the Fraunhofer Institute, also if, of course, on a shorter scale and, uh, most important, with differ very different boundary conditions because, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, Fraunhofer insists on all uh, verticals, uh, as uh, any attack uh, probably will do, uh, while uh, Eduardo Maldi Foundation targets his activity only on space sector and uh, on space-related activities. Let me stress only because technology transfer for, from space is for sure appealing, for sure is enabling, but uh, is uh, clearly not easy. Space, indeed, uh, is not uh, a traditional sector, and uh, there are a list of uh, crucial elements which, uh, in a certain sense, uh, prevent the full exploitation of the space investment and capability based on private investment. The major issue is uh, still cultural, because uh, space development uh, benefits are not only for space stakeholder and user. User. And this is one of the major reasons for which uh, Eduardo Valdi Foundation with the Fiera di Roma organized also the New Space Economy Expo Forum to show the opportunity already available for non-space users to improve their products through space-related technology and application. Then there is another uh, um, um, element that is that space is not anymore a domain only for stems and uh, for a specific uh, profile of stems. Uh, and this means increase and encourage uh, the contamination between different sectors. But uh, of course, this new space economy assumes also the involvement of private actors willing to invest on their own fund in specific line of activity with the potential economy opportunity in the short term and of course uh, the creation of market uh, to facilitate a quick trans technology transfer is for many companies an essential condition for further investigating uh, their involvement because uh, do not forget that investment are important as well policies in this uh, very first uh, uh, stage the, uh, we, which are the condition at the moment the condition are uh, 
uh, still uh, uh, prodromic because worldwide governments are still the main investor in space activities via procurement, grant mechanism and so on. And the OECD uh, report of this year uh, highlight that only five years ago the global landscape for space activities has evolved. We, uh, why? Because new countries investing in space research and development uh, getting involved in the value chain and uh, this country develop new business proposal uh, um, focusing on uh, micro satellite, uh, data policy, uh, data, uh, big data analyt analytics and so on. And uh, this uh, have an effect on private funding, uh, uh, be, uh, letting a commercial project also grown with uh, an unprecedented private capital flow in the space sector from angel and uh, venture capital investment. Although we, uh, we, uh, there are many government uh, programs around the world that support the development of the space economy, uh, the growth of commercial space activities remain still modest over, uh, in general and should not be overestimate. Also, the startup, the famous startup sector is increasing um, um, through uh, hackathon, grants, uh, incubator, accelerator initiative that uh, came from uh, institutional investment because we have not to forget that the growth of uh, an industrial system for each country is also an institutional responsibility. Now, to cut a long story short, it's easy to understand that also if Italy has been a, a precursor in creating the Eduardo Amaldi Foundation to accelerate to technology transfer the process of contamination of space-related activity in traditional sector, it should consider that three years ago, about three and a half years ago, it was absolutely not trivial to even discuss a roadmap to target the concrete development of space economy, not only lì, in Italy, but uh, at, a globe, at the European mostly, and also quite a global level. This is to say that uh, uh, the situation that uh, we can, uh, the picture that we, we can give uh, today is very uh, different from the one we had at the very beginning and that today Eduardo Maldi Foundation, Foundation likely uh, leverage on three years of investment and effort made to survive a sort of dead valley. Uh, and today we, uh, we have an happy end story. And I'm here to highlight also that the long and critical path for, of the very first three has been successful and that today FEA, Eduardo Mali Foundation, is, prou is a proud owner of a portfolio of interesting and challenging activities and to foster new dynamics and a consisting increasing involvement of space uh, and non-space private actor willing to invest in the short and medium term in small-scale companies and start-up ready also to take a risk in a disruptive business line and easy also the access of new commerce. Uh, to set uh, the uh, uh, Eduardo Valli Foundation set, uh, to, to do this, Eduardo Valli Foundation uh, set a, a, a put uh, in practice in, uh, a, on, uh, on, uh, on the roadmap a, a set of initiatives uh, in order to uh, place uh, itself in a crucial role in the evolution of the national space economy and open also additional opportunities to enlarge this perimeter of activities at the international level, uh, focusing in particular on Europe, because uh, it's impossible today to uh, foresee, in, in, uh, to foresee in, uh, a roadmap which does not take in account uh, the European roadmap. 
I just want to mention some of them. Today, the Eduardo Maldi Foundation is the point of reference for Italian space agency for the technology transfer process. It is the European Space Agency ambassador platform for integrated space application in Italy. It's one of the major Copernicus relay for the European Commission. It is the uh, scientific advisor of a Primo Space Fund, of course, and is the expert partner of Space Up Initiative inside the Horizon 2020 program to foster the involvement of new startup in space activities. Uh, these are some of the activities that we put in place and that and that and which consolidate the role of Eduardo Mandi Foundation today. But uh, just uh, to, to, to give you the flavor of how dynamics is, uh, the dynamic is this situation, I want to mention four new initiatives just announced Sorry. and uh, Sorry, consolidated yeah. yesterday. Can you hear and, uh, me? Sorry. Can you, you, you cannot hear me? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes. Just, uh, just... I, I just finished uh, two minutes. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to close. Uh, um, um, mention you the four, the, the new, four new activities that we uh, uh, started just yesterday during the uh, New Space Economy Expo Forum. The, the first of it, of it, uh, is the opening of a new office in Torino linked with an agreement with the Fante Group to foster the involvement of private, private stakeholders in, uh, and uh, uh, private investors in, uh, in, uh, in our activities. And this is important because uh, Piedmont is uh, uh, playing a, a very important role in the uh, overall space economy in Italy uh, with the Lazio region, which is also another very, very, very active uh, region and in, in which we are already uh, very well based. The second is uh, 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 the institution in collaboration with the Bari University Aldo Moro of a summer school devoted to agri-food tech to foster the involvement of young professionals and companies active in new trends for agri-food. And this is also important because uh, we have uh, uh, also the, we feel the responsibility also to create an ecosystem that can, at uh, a different level, contribute to the development of space economy. Then we have a new project to enabling transfer technology and to support the quick growth of involvement startup, which is uh, uh, just uh, ready to start and uh, will start in January. And the last but not least, we is, uh, establish an observatory for space finance based on a collaboration agreement with the Lewis University to analyze the most promising trends and to map space tech and deep tech startup. Eduardo Maldi Foundation delivered already a report on this in February 2020 and uh, is ready to release a new uh, version in 2012, uh, based on a network of about 300 very small scale companies. However, we are confident that uh, the, uh, the consolidated cooperation with the Lewis and FEBAF will allow a significant added value and will provide a, a consistent asset to drive new space venture. La, to conclude, what made the, different, uh, the difference? How we can survive the, the Dead Valley and exploit these uh, new uh, capabilities? Uh, the, the, the key um, a point was a deep knowledge of the space sector and this is a colder, companies and product. Of course, Italian Space Agency played a decisive role, but also the background of Itazia Consortium in disruptive line of activities like additive manufacturing, atomic sputtering or graphene has been very important to assess a unique competence and to build, a long, build up a long-term vision. To conclude, 
I, 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 I think that uh, it's important to uh, uh, try to exploit every synergies and to put uh, this competence and this uh, uh, part uh, and this, uh, uh, to share these competencies and this part to other private or public institutions interesting in supporting the, the overall roadmap. No, uh, the overall uh, roadmap and we are uh, open also to establish new cooperation in order to avoid duplication and overlapping but to try to uh, uh, exploit uh, synergies uh, let me close with the famous motto go alone if you want to go fast however never go alone if you want to go far thank you Thank you, Maria Cristina, and uh, let me welcome uh, Giampaolo Manzella, uh, who represents the, our government in this uh, meeting, in this webinar. Uh, good morning, Giampaolo. Thank you, thank you for, uh, for joining us. And uh, as uh, Under Secretary of uh, Ministry of uh, Minister of Economic Development, uh, the Italian Minister of Economic Development, uh, we would love to know more about the plans, the programs, the projects and the vision that you can share with us uh, about space economy and, or new space economy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here and to join you. I had some technical problems, but uh, thank you for the assistance in solving them. Um, uh, as you know, uh, Italy is a country with a large tradition in uh, uh, space. Um, uh, we have a strong uh, presence in the, in, throughout all the value chain, throughout all the areas of production, from uh, satellites to um, uh, launchers, uh, to all the activity that uh, goes with the uh, analysis of, di of data and the providing of services on the basis of, of uh, data. This is due to, if you want, a unique historical combination of of uh, uh, scientific capacity. It's, uh, it's interesting that all the founders of the, of the um, uh, combination between science and industry were academics. We have a um, combination of industry with a strong public sector in the years fr from the 1960s to the, the end of the 90s. Uh, and we have uh, had moments of a uh, strong, if you want, political impulse to, to the old industry, the space uh, industry. This is uh, staying. We have got uh, uh, a, a still a very strong uh, industry with uh, an important uh, public shareholding. We have got uh, an important contribution on the ESA uh, European Space Agency. We got uh, programs as the one that, uh, for example, Mr. Resnini and Mr. De Tori will be speaking to you uh, after, that is the development of space, uh, of uh, startup scene in the space uh, sector. What about the, the, the future, if you want? Uh, obviously, this is a, a system that was built, if you want, on, uh, on the basis of a traditional vision, that is the vision where uh, space was a public sector uh, domain, uh, where geopolitical regions, uh, reasons, uh, so, uh, technological sovereignty reasons, uh, symbolic reasons, uh, where if you want melting together to uh explain and support the the launching of programs in this area now as you know we have entered a completely new scene that is labeled new economy and uh, we have got as as i said to move now our system to do this new scene we have already started uh, with uh, for example these startup programs and this is uh, an, an area where I think we should be strongly in the years uh, ahead of us. Mm, this is the, the road that we have already started. Uh, in my opinion, our um, 
And the, the indication for our activity is well uh, indicated by the European uh, community. Uh, the European community has been in the last, at least in the last uh, 10 years, uh, steadily providing a clear indication of where uh, space economy is heading. And uh, I think it has got very clear the, the areas of, uh, uh, of activity. Uh, space economy is very high among the sectors uh, where uh, the, the European industry has to be in the future. And I think this is uh, crucial because it, it, it gives a preeminence to space economy in all European uh, documents, in all European policy uh, choices, and uh, it provides, in my view, an area of uh, cooperation with other, with other European uh, countries. So I think that this is, must be our, our goal to really be in uh, the European uh, policy uh, direction. The European policy direction, basically in this moment, as I understand it, it focuses very much on the concept of ecosystems, of industrial ecosystems, which is basically a concept which I find very interesting and uh, politically and under the policy making standpoint very useful because it basically indicates uh, uh, an area which is not only uh, physical but also of, of connection where uh, uh, large enterprises, startups, uh, me, medium enterprises, university research centers in a way cooperate around common projects. Uh, and this is uh, an area which has got to be strengthened both at the European level at, and at the uh, Italian and at the Italian level. So I think that this is a good indication of where we have to be in the, in the, next, uh, in the next years. As I said, we have started doing it. Um, I want to highlight the fact that in this, uh, in, this, uh, public, in this budget law, we are working on the mid caps that are part of the filiere of the value chain because we think that in this value chain we got a lot of in this value chain we got a lot of opportunities to have these small and medium companies grow so to sum it up i think we have got a very clear european commitment a very clear internal commitment to space policy and i think this is something that will stay and will uh, influence the policy both in research in enterprise in large enterprise in uh, small enterprise, in startups, and in technology transfer. As you know, because we are working in the same scene, we have got all the instruments ready for that. And so I think it's, it's, it's uh, not time. Our duty of, of, of people that in this moment has got responsibility is basically make these instruments and make these tools uh, work effectively on the ground. Thank you, Gianpaolo. Thank you very much. How long you can stay with us uh, due to your, uh, of course, your agenda, your tight agenda? You and then we'll. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much uh, to Gianpaolo Manzella and uh, let's switch uh, to the VC scene right now with the two outstanding players in our ecosystem, starting with uh, Enrico Resmini. Please. Thank you, Salvo. Good morning to everyone. And uh, well, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, being a, a, an aeronautical engineer as a background, it's super cool to be here at the New Space Economy Forum. Um, so let me just start by saying a bit what the National Innovation Fund stands for, because Mr. Manzella was mentioning about the instrument that the government lately you know, has put in place to foster you know, the birth of a new 
let's say, stimulus to innovation, especially to the ecosystem of venture capital and the startup system. So the National Innovation Fund was born uh, uh, basically beginning of this year in January. Um, thanks to uh, the action of the government and Casa Depositi Prestiti, we were assigned in excess of 1 billion euros, uh, which is a big amount of money, uh, to basically give new impulse and direction you know, to the development of the, of the ecosystem. You know that Italy lags a bit behind other countries, other you know, neighboring countries in Europe uh, uh, when it goes to uh, venture capital investments. In, in France, for example, I was reading the latest data this year, they will close up in the order of 5 billion euros of uh, venture capital investment, which is a big amount compared to Italy, where you know we're going to close the year roughly around 600, 700 million euros. So you know it's an order of magnitude of distance, and this is not accept it's not acceptable for a country like Italy that has such a long tradition in terms of industry leaders, research leaders, and we know that startups are a fundamental component of this innovation background. So our action started back in January. Uh, we were quite uh, quick in deploying uh, this 1 billion into investment teams. We now have seven investment teams, seven structure funds with a mix of direct and indirect investments. Uh, and over the past uh, 10 months, we have already invested in excess of 200 million euros in the system. So, you know, I think uh, our action is starting to get ground, it's starting to become uh, evident in a market like Italy. Of course, space economy has been one of the first area of interest for us. I, I think actually it was one the first probably investment we did as National Innovation Fund was with Gianluca on Primo Space, uh, a typical I would say type of investment where you invest on other uh, venture capital funds. In this case, you know Primo Space, Gianluca probably will tell more about it. Was immediately to us a very good opportunity because of the scope and because of the team that was presented to us. You know, typically when we invest, we want to see good strategies, but also a strong team uh, behind. And so I think it was a very promising investment. I think the first uh, results of this investment are kind of showing up actually these days. So um, that was a really a, a clear idea. More often, you know, Salvo, I get the question of why, you know, how do startups couple with space? You know, because when you think about space or space economy, your mind goes to, you know, very advanced uh, space exploration, Mars, the moon landing, et cetera, you know. And when you think about startups, your mind immediately goes to a garage, a canteen with some hackers, young hackers with the hoodies, writing codes, right? So this disconnect, you know, sometimes I've been asked, how do you actually match it up? And I always say, well, you know, when it goes to space and to space economy, I think there are three fundamental characteristics that make startups, uh, you know, uh, really on the stage. The first one is that when you think about space economy these days, it's not just about, you know, high tech, deep tech exploration, where, you know, big government investment funds are dedicated and allocated. It's a lot about also commercial exploitation of those technologies. When you talk about space economy, it's not just, you know, the flight or the satellite going into outer space, but there's a lot of applications in the downlink area, in the earth observation area, in the data analysis, which are by definition the home turf of startups, where startups can really bring lateral thinking, new ideas, quicker, faster, that can become, you know, companies. So that's the first element. The second element is peculiar to what Manzella, Dr. Manzella was saying, you know, the filiera, the, the supply chain in space economy. Especially, look at Italy. Italy, you know, I think it employs more in excess of 7,000 people. But if you look at the average size of company, it's tiny size of company. There are few big players and a long tail of small companies. Now, this can be a weakness when you compare yourself to other space uh, players in the world. However, for startups, it's an advantage because it means that our companies, space companies, are used to working with small companies and startups are small companies. So for startups, it's easier to work in the supply chain uh, of space. The third thing I think, you know, space uh, stands a bit uh, like Formula One for automotive, space stands to other industrial sector. I mean, it's a great lab. It's a great settings for testing 
new stuff that can be deployed then into other industries. And so it's really scalable. The solutions that come out from space economy, downlink, uplink space economy, can be really scaled up into other sectors. And that's where you know, the venture capital access comes into action because we are always looking for startups that can scale up their solution into, into other markets. So for us, you know, as National Innovation Fund, space is clearly a direction of investment. Over the next uh, few months, uh, uh, what we're doing, what we'll continue to do is the following. The first is we are already screening uh, other funds that we would like to finance. Uh, so vertical specialized teams uh, that then, you know, in an indirect way will uh, supplement our activity on the market, like we did with premium space. The second thing, we are structuring and designing dedicated acceleration programs for startups in space economy. I think that's a key axis. This is, it's a key angle of attack for an ecosystem that needs to develop. You need to have acceleration spots, acceleration programs. Startups, you know, cannot be invented under the shower. Startups need to be coached, trained, and they need to have professional people, corporates around them that can help them to develop nicely. So we are going to launch in the next few months uh, a dedicated acceleration program. Together with you, Salvo, with Enea Tech, we will you know, find ways to foster uh, significantly the tech transfer access, which is fundamental because you know, there is a lot of nice research that is just waiting a bit of money to transform itself into valuable IP, into valuable, you know, and promising uh, startups. And of course, we will also do direct investments. We all already have in our portfolio a few startups which are very promising. One I'd like to mention is the Orbit. The Orbit is, you know, I think just launched with the Vega uh, uh, launcher. Uh, this new system for uh, deployment or suborbit deployment of microsatellites. Uh, that has been, you know, proven uh, to be quite effectively. It's in our portfolio. We're very happy about the team and more to come. I mean, we have a, a very nice pipeline of investment. So I think, uh, you know, to sum it up, uh, we are here to, as National Innovation Fund, to foster the development of the system, to support startups and to give, you know, Italy the right place it needs to have in the overall uh, system uh, of, of innovation in the world. I think space is one of the key angles for us given the tradition that Italy has, given the companies that we have, and given, I think, also the good pipeline of startups that are coming up and knocking on our doors, on ours and of Gianluca. So it looks promising. Thank you, Enrico. Very interesting. Uh, very, very interesting. I totally agree with, uh, with, your, uh, with your comments and your highlights. And... Uh, Let's go to Gianluca. Gianluca. Of course, you can introduce yourself, uh, even if uh, maybe the ecosystem uh, already knows you very well. Um, how how do you will highlight the the space landscape, uh, and uh, what is your idea about the rolling up of uh, your space fund? That is the first uh, private fund. Uh, operating uh, thank you thank you salvo good morning everybody um yes uh, i am manager and founder of uh, an investment company called primo Miglio. we are specialized in uh, technology venture capital and uh, we operate in two sectors one is the digital sector uh, and the other one is the space sector we just launched the last summer primo space uh, which is a Technology early stage venture capital fund focused on the space, new space technologies, new space economy. And the fund is 80 million euros uh, target. We started with 58 million euros, thanks to our cornerstone investors, uh, European Investment Fund and Casa Depositi Presti. We were able to hit the first close this summer. And in fact, we just uh, rolled out the first investment that was completed and announced last week. Um, so the investment was an investment of 1.5 million euros in Icospace. That's a spin-off uh, company uh, out of Torino, which fundamentally came out of the Polytechnic of Torino, which is probably one of the top, uh, if not one of the top two or three engineering schools in Europe. And uh, what they do is they develop intelligence systems on board to autonomous intelligent 
artificial intelligent technology for autonomous systems. So for all those systems that into space need to operate uh, autonomously, autonomously. So that's a large uh, area of development and they were one of the first company, probably the, I believe the first company to actually demonstrate their technology uh, into actually a space environment live. Um, it's, um, so as you said before, uh, there, is a, there is this uh, big wave of startups uh, into space happening in the last few, uh, few years. It wasn't like that in the past. It's something that is starting to happen in, uh, I would say, in the past five years. And along that, we've seen this uh, deployment of venture capital money into this area, uh, which from, from zero virtually five years ago, now is reaching around five billion a year investments in uh, startups. So there is a lot of uh, movement and uh, our, how can I say, our um, take uh, of that is that fundamentally uh, there are a number of parameters that came into play all at the same time, which is the reason why we are today talking about new space economy. When fundamentally all of these elements, which is regulatory technology and market drivers, they are fundamentally opening up the, the market of space to any kind of enterprise. I think that's the big, the big news. That's the big uh, new thing that is creating a new asset class into space is the fact that uh, it's accessible today. You can uh, use, you can buy, and you can rent all kinds of services from startups and from incumbent players. So you can buy a slot to ship your satellite in space. You can buy software to manage it. You can uh, rent the gr ground stations. So fundamentally, all the pieces that are needed to, to develop uh, some kind of a space operation is accessible to the private enterprise. And I think that's fundamentally what is really driving the change is something that in many ways is similar to what happened to the internet 25 years ago in many ways. Our fund invests uh, mainly in Italy. We plan to deploy 80% of the money in Italy along two lines of investment. We will invest early stage. So I think that uh, ICO is a good example. And in the next weeks, we will see another investment in an Italian startup, which is uh, that kind of, let's say, early stage investments. So those are companies that somehow are commercial already in the first phases of the development of the commercial activity. And then we will also make investments in technology transfer. So bringing out some key technologies out of the universities and bring it to the market to, for commercialization. So the fund will have these two components. As I was said, as I was saying, we will invest 80% in Italy and 20% abroad, which for us means uh, the rest of Europe, US and Israel, where we fundamentally mainly will co-invest with other venture firms. And we have a uh, good relationship, I would say, already with uh, some relevant firms that operate into space. And uh, we found that there is a growing interest from venture capitalists into this area. I think uh, the feeling that we are getting, although it's early, is this could be a whole new practice in venture capital. You know that in venture capital there are very high specialized uh, oper operators, so life science, ICT, uh, green technologies. Well, we believe in the future there will be space as its own, let's say, investment area because it's really broad. And um, the interesting thing that, of course, so we are swing, we're already looking at potential co-investments abroad with, uh, with co-investors. And uh, I think one thing that I can say that already we noticed, which is different, that we've seen in Germany, we've seen in Switzerland, we've seen in France and Spain, is the, um, so there are some marquee projects happening in certain countries. So, for example, right now in Germany, we've seen already two uh, startups raising above one, 100 million euros to build launcher businesses, autonomous launchers businesses. So to be strategically uh, able to have uh, like uh, all the capabilities of launching into space payload. And uh, the last week it was the, announced the 91 million euro investment in ESAR technologies. Uh, and there is another company uh, that is raising 100 million in Germany for this purpose. We've seen projects were fundamentally raising 50 to 100 million euros to build global network for IoT. 
So I, I think that we are in Italy not at the stage yet where we are ready to build on projects like that, although it would be potentially possible in the next few years. But I also believe that if we correctly see the market, some of these companies, and you mentioned the orbit, that's already a good start, could become significantly big by, uh, through also large investments like this one. So I think also our role as Primo Space will be to see the right companies that can actually make that jump and become uh, significant global players in their own markets. Um, the other thing that is surprising as we are going into deal flow deeply now and into investments is that uh, we have seen much uh, lower activity in the downstream area. We were uh, thinking to see much more uh, downstream application companies and actually right now we are fundamentally looking at upstream only, uh, mainly I would say, not only, but mainly upstream. Which, uh, it's, it's interesting, and uh, I think that the preliminary explanation for that uh, um, is, not, is not yet completely clear, but probably there is one point, which is that uh, digital startups could actually access this market uh, very quickly and strongly, uh, but they simply don't know about the, poten the potential. They don't know about the availability of the data. They don't know about the rolling out that's going to happen in the next years. There was a startup last week that sent us the business plan from San Francisco from Y Combinator. And uh, they are a big data company analyzing uh, Earth observation uh, images. And uh, they were telling us that in the next five years, the amount of satellites that will be launched into space will be such that every meter, square meter of Earth will be taking a picture of every hour. So that if that is so, if that is going to happen, fundamentally we have a very substantial scanning machine above us that fundamentally is repeating in a completely, you know, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, coming back and back and seeing all the changes. And the, the amount of applications that you can build out of this is just infinite. And the amount of, let's say, data that you can pull into your own application if you're already on the market as a digital startup, and you can add this data and give it a push and give it a twist and get, find new information and exploit it, I think that's going to open up a market in a very significant way. So I guess that our strategy right now will be about you know, making the first investment and trying to evangelize the digital ecosystem about this opportunity. Thank you, Gianluca. Sorry, uh, we, we can go deeper, uh, we can dig deeper uh, just uh, some minutes after and uh, because of the, of the tight agenda, I would ask to Gianpaolo Manzella to give us a final address uh, and uh, because uh, you have, I know that you have to leave uh, um, and uh, just, uh, uh, just a quick suggestion. Uh, we are scanning the planet uh, with satellites, uh, with a space as a service, uh, with new ideas and visions. What about climate challenges uh, and the relations for, from your point of view? Just to close uh, and see you very soon. Um, well, I think I, it's very interesting what, uh, what I, we heard today, uh, because from the Italian perspective, it really looks at uh, the world and uh, if you want outer or uh, out of the world, because we are looking into the space. Um, I think we have, we have, uh, we are, we are really at the moment of uh, deep change. If you want the traditional fascination that people has had on uh, over space, think about the number of movies that have been dedicated to space. No? Each year, there are two or three movies, uh, very often very budgeted movies, very often Oscar-winning movies uh, that talk about space, which in a way is a phenomenon that really touches relatively few, a few number of people. So this means really that there is a, a clear natural fascination over space. In the last years, at this anthropological fascination, 
there is an, an additional fascination that is the possibility of making money with space. And this uh, intertwining of two fascination of uh, the man, that is space and money, uh, in my view, uh, if you add them to the elements I was political, geopolitical, security elements, I think is uh, clearly an indication of the fact that this trend is going to stay in, uh, in years ahead. Our country, the things I, I, to I told uh, before, is, I think, in a very good position about that. Uh, I, I don't know if Gianluca told this number today. What struck me about a, a webinar we had with him uh, some days ago is the fact that in what one year of activity, his team has seen almost a thousand uh, possible startups, which means that there is a huge a basket of ideas, of uh, enter uh, enterprises that are really popping up with uh, ideas that, thanks to Fondo Nazionale Innovazione, thanks to Fondo Eneatec, can really have a fundamental uh, financial aid to become uh, enterprises, to really uh, become uh, realities making um, in, the, in the economy. The other element is that really we are talking about an area which goes, and here again, another thing that, that Gianluca told is interesting because we all expected these startups in the data processing area. And no, this means that the Italian uh, artisan and mechanical tradition is uh, uh, moving towards uh, space. And this is something that uh, I'm sure that Fondo Nazionale Innovazione is already working on. That is, we are, uh, and this, if you think, is one of our elements. The fact that the 50% of the International Space uh, Station is built with Italian, uh, in Italy, and on the basis of the Italian mechanical tradition, I think this, I think, gives uh, an idea of what our room could be, what our space could be in this future, in this future, uh, uh, if you want, uh, industrial environment, which is huge, because it goes from these uh, the, these elements to uh, earth observation to uh, the idea of extracting natural. Uh, mining from uh, mining from uh, from uh, uh, the moon and uh, and who knows where that is we have uh, from the ideas of space tourism i i think i went one year ago to uh, to uh, one of these uh, at the time we used to have uh, physical meetings we already forgot the fact that there was a time where we used to to have physical meetings. But I went to these physical meetings where there was this uh, Italian startup specializing in helping uh, small companies in traditionally made in Italy uh, uh, activities, how to change to, to face space economy. For example, what, what struck me in times of space tourism, why don't think about rich tourists who want to have uh, an astronaut uh, uh, mute uh, done by an Italian stylist. This is not, uh, just to make understand how large is the possible, um, the possible uh, domain of products and services that, that are, are done by this. This, in my view, needs a clear industrial policy in that, in this respect. As I said before, I think that the fact that space needs uh, an industrial policy is uh, given by the fact that space is with four or five other industries. The one that is vertically uh, uh, cited and, and considered in all uh, European uh, 
uh, documents. And this is something in, very interesting because it's, it's considered one of the, of the areas where really we have to make a strong effort of uh, combination of our capabilities, uh, scientific, uh, financial, industrial, uh, at, at the national and the European level. So I think that the path is clear and the instruments are clear. I think we have Europe as a guide and uh, I'm sure that the Italian government will continue its activity to focus on this because I think really it's a very spread opinion. Also politically, the fact that space is a central industry for Italy's technological uh, future and in a world where, where technology means more and more soft power, also the political role our country will play in the future. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I have uh, to leave, but it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gianpaolo. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, maybe for Gianluca, it would be nice to hear from Italian VCs that the level uh, that the, what's the level of risk they are ready to leverage. From what Gianluca said, it looks uh, German VCs are more courageous, uh, or it's just my impression. Say mute. I think that uh, it, rather than a question of courage, it's a question of investment strategies. Uh, I would say, of course, let's say if you run an 80 million euro fund, uh, you cannot invest in a, in a 100 million round, uh, probably, but it doesn't fit your strategy. Now, the reason why I was saying it is that uh, I guess that there is also a signal the fact that we are in a different stage of development as an industry in space in Italy in the sense that we are much more advanced. I mean, in Italy, we have companies like Avio, we, we have uh, uh, some significant companies that are in the, uh, operate in the upstream uh, segment. Uh, so I guess Germany is trying to catch up in this case, trying to launch some large uh, investments into, you know, launching companies. Uh, they want to build a capability. I mean, the signal that already two companies in that space are raising more than 100 million just in Germany, it's an interesting signal. So I don't think it's a question of courage, it's a question about the, the investment strategy that every investor has. I also, maybe what I wanted to say is that maybe this is some material for people like Salvo and Rico uh, to think about in the sense that there might be some, how can I say, moonshot projects, uh, you know, some, let's say, uh, marquee projects then maybe Italy can try to pull together to be a stronger competitor in the international landscape. I think that the purpose of a VC is uh, to invest very early in uh, very promising companies and it takes uh, several years to, for these companies to mature. So we are just at the beginning of an era. If I can add one thing, Gianluca, I think also the one thing would be also useful to say to our startups when we meet them is that they immediately should have a kind of at least European development program because space economy is not just you know a country play. I mean the birth of the company can be in Italy, you know, through the university, through our you know company. But then the exploitation of their uh, capabilities needs to be at European level, right? Because then you find all the market opportunities. It's not even global, no. And so what we are seeing is that some startups already have, you know, kind of hubs all over the places, right, to, to kind of sneak into commercial contracts, exploit the different programs financed by the different governments, etc. And there is another interesting thing that I wanted to mention is that, uh, yes, first of all, well, they all think about international day one, but I also very much interconnecting among them. Uh, so there is a real value chain into this, uh, into this industry. So, for example, just to make an example, we are looking at investing in a company. I mean, right now we are focusing on Italian investment, but we are building a pipeline for international investments already. And we are looking to, you know, one of, one of these companies that we are quite interested into uh, already as, as a supplier and Italian startup. And uh, they are discussing that by us investing in them, they will redeploy this amount of money into Italy back to a supply, co a supply contract with the Italian startup. 
So you see, this is interesting. So if you can build this ecosystem, these value chains, uh, all this money will be flowing in the private markets across, uh, across Europe, and then we can lift the industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have just a uh, few minutes uh, for closing remarks. Uh, then we will go in pause and we'll start with the second flight of our webinar at uh, 10.45. Uh, Maria Cristina, uh, could you please uh, give us a closing remark and... Uh, Yes, of course. I fully agree with the consideration made up to now, and especially with the statement of it is a, it's a on now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I fully uh, agree with what uh, Subsecretary Mansella said. For the uh, space economy roadmap, there is only one way, which is Europe. It's very important to profit of the opportunity of, of, that uh, also Mr. mentioned to join the European Roadmap for the Agenda 2040. That means eco-sustainability, improvement of quality of life and revolution of production of process. I am not worried that up to now just upstream companies uh, try to, to to grasp the venture capital op opportunity. Downstream will come soon. The important is to follow and to help the, and accompany the startup, the small scale companies in this process. And uh, I'm very proud of uh, the choice of ICO as a first investment because ICO is an example of a startup that uh, uh, has been accompanied by Eduardo Maldi Foundation since the beginning and just last year um, uh, 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 get a grant for uh, the best startup and uh, this is an example now Eduardo Maldi Foundation is already embedded in the European process through the uh, uh, scientific and technical part and I think that we all together can really combine this process in order to really represent uh, a strong asset, national asset, in the uh, landscape of, of the 27 countries. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for our, to our speakers and to all the, the people who interact with us and follow us till now. We will see you for in, second, uh, in the second flight of uh, our webinar. We will start around 10.45. Thank you, dear speakers, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Have a nice Thank you, Salvo. Thank you, Salvo. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, maybe for Gianluca, it would be nice to hear from Italian VCs that the level, uh, that the, what's the level of risk they are ready to leverage. From what Gianluca said, it looks German VCs are more courageous, or it's just my impression. Say mute. I think that uh, it, rather than a question of courage, it's a question of investment strategies. Uh, I would say, of course, let's say if you run an 80 million euro fund, uh, you cannot invest in in a, in a 100 million round, uh, probably, but doesn't fit your strategy. No, the reason why I was saying it is that uh, I guess that there is also a signal the fact that we are in a different stage of development as an industry in space in Italy, in the sense that we are much more advanced. I mean, in Italy, we have companies like Avio, we, we have uh, uh, some significant companies that are in the, uh, operating the upstream uh, segment. Uh, so I guess Germany is trying to catch up in this case, trying to launch some large uh, investments into, you know, launching companies. Uh, they want to build a capability. I mean, the signal that already two companies in that space are raising more than 100 million just in Germany, it's an interesting signal. So I don't think it's a question of courage. It's a question about the, the investment strategy that every investor has. 
I also, maybe what I wanted to say is that maybe this is some material for people like Salvo and Rico uh, to think about in the sense that there might be some, how can I say, moonshot projects, uh, you know, some, let's say, uh, marquee projects that maybe Italy can try to pull together to be a stronger competitor in the international landscape. I think that the purpose of VC is uh, to invest very early in uh, very promising companies and it takes uh, several years to, for these companies to mature. So we are just at the beginning of an era. If I can add one thing, Gianluca, I think also the one thing would be also useful to say to our startups when we meet them is that they immediately should have a kind of at least European development program because space economy is not just you know, a country play. I mean, the birth of the company can be in Italy you know, through the university, through our, you know, company. But then the exploitation of their uh, capabilities needs to be at European level, right? Because then uh, you find all the market opportunities, if not even global, no? So what we are seeing is that some startups already have, you know, kind of hubs all over the places, right? To, to kind of sneak into commercial contracts, exploit the different programs financed by the different governments, etc. And there is another interesting thing that I wanted to mention is that, uh, yes, first of all, well, they all think about international day one, but I also very much interconnected among them. Uh, so there is a real value chain into this, uh, into this industry. So, for example, just to make an example, we are looking at investing in a company. I mean, right now we are focusing on Italian investment, but we are building a pipeline for international investments already. And we're looking to, you know, one of, one of these companies that we are quite interested into, uh, already as, as a supplier, an Italian startup. And uh, they are discussing that by us investing in them, they will redeploy this amount of money into Italy back to a supply, co supply contract with the Italian startup. So you see, this is interesting. So if you can build this ecosystem, these value chains, uh, all this money will be flowing in the private markets across, uh, across Europe, and then we can lift the industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have just a uh, few minutes uh, for closing remarks. Uh, then we will go in pause and we'll start with the second flight of our webinar at uh, 10.45. Uh, Maria Cristina, uh, could you please uh, give us a closing remark and... Uh, Yes, of course. I fully agree with the consideration made up to now, and especially with the statement of it is a, it's a on now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I fully uh, agree with what uh, Subsecretary Mansella said. For the uh, space economy roadmap, there is only one way, which is Europe. It's very important to profit of the opportunity of, of, that uh, also Mr. mentioned to join the European Roadmap for the Agenda 2040. That means eco-sustainability, improvement of quality of life and revolution of production of process. I am not worried that up to now just upstream companies uh, try to, to to grasp the venture capital op opportunity. Downstream will come soon. The important is to follow and to help the, and accompany the startup, the small scale companies in this process. And uh, I'm very proud of uh, the choose of ICO as a first investment because ICO is an example of a startup that uh, uh, has been accompanied by Eduardo Maldi Foundation since the beginning and just last year um, uh, 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 get a grant for uh, the best startup and uh, this is an example now Eduardo Maldi Foundation is already embedded in the European process through the uh, uh, scientific and technical part and I think that we all together can really accompany this process in order to really represent uh, a strong asset, national asset, in the uh, landscape of, of the 27 countries. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for our, to our speakers and to all the 
the people will, will interact with us and follow us till now. We will see you for in second uh, in the second flight of uh, our webinar. We will start around 10:45. Thank you, dear speakers, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Salvo. Thank you, Salvo. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Dramatic changes, real changes, but also image of changes, uh, generating uh, hopes and uh, and fears. Space has uh, been developed uh, the indicate in a closed center. Uh, 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 technologies, uh, products, uh, services, uh, according to unique standards, in isolation from the uh, down to standards, making space a separate part. Certo perché sono gli intro di Asuccia. Made space becoming a part of the daily life of humanity on planet Earth. And this is the reason why space has become much too important to be left in the hands of the space experts only. Meaning the arrival of new actors, uh, and these new actors, they have transformed, they are transforming uh, the, the space sector. And, and the change are reported on a daily basis. During this period of COVID, and only within a few months, we have lived the departure of three missions to Mars the usual US uh, mission, but for the first time, a mission from China, a mission from the Emirates. We have seen the landing of the uh, Changi 4 on the far side of, of the moon. We have um, sample return missions from the moon, again with Changi 5, uh, which is we just landed the, on the moon recently but also Osiris Rex and uh, Ayabusa coming back with samples from uh, asteroids. We have seen astronauts from NASA and recent, more recently from Japan being sent to the space station on board a private transportation system delivered by SpaceX. We have seen 1,000 satellites of Starlink in orbit with the first services uh, being started and even the recovery of, uh, of one web from uh, the bankruptcy with a significant contribution of U the UK government. And, and that is also a big change. And hundreds and hundreds of new entrepreneurs, investors, making space moving more and more towards the business as usual. And it's a strong momentum, a strong momentum due to the combination of uh, two flows, uh, the, the usual top-down one and the new uh, bottom-up, uh, combination of uh, private and public efforts, uh, combination of uh, space actors and non-space actors, uh, of new and traditional actors. So it's a strong momentum, which is an irreversible uh, movement. And to illustrate that momentum, Roberto Battiston asked me to, uh, uh, to take the the Luxembourg case. Uh, and it's true that the Luxembourg case is, uh, is unique. Uh, first of all, by its uh, history. Uh, Luxembourg is the only country in Europe uh, having become uh, uh, a space power much before joining ESA as a member state with the creation of uh, the operator SES. And then, when Luxembourg became a, a member of uh, ESA, it took less than 10 years to make Luxembourg becoming the biggest contributor to ESA programs 
relatively to their uh, GMP. But unique also by uh, its priorities, taking satellite telecommunication as a priority in the 80s was a significant uh, risk. Taking the exploitation of space resource as another priority uh, uh, in uh, five years ago was another uh, significant risk. It looked almost uh, as fiction when Luxembourg uh, embarked in these uh, priorities. But like, at least on satellite telecommunication, we can say today that it was risky, but successful. And I am sure that it will be the same for the exploitation of uh, space resources. But unique also by the approach. The government is just a facilitator, much more than a driver. Putting in place frameworks, legal framework, uh, with the uh, low space law of 2016, uh, uh, financial framework with a, with a, a fund, and a, an investment fund, and a scientific and research framework and the inauguration on the 18th of November, a couple of weeks ago, of the European Space Resource and Innovation Center is a platform which will be used by a lot of entrepreneurs and, and, and investors. Meaning that the, the government of Luxembourg is building bridges building bridges between the space sector and other sectors, and especially the digital sectors and the uh, resource sectors. And I would like to illustrate that, uh, first of all, okay, the, the digital sector. The digital sector is more and more important for, uh, for the space sector, uh, because space is uh, space uh, tools are just collecting data and uh, the, the, the data processing is uh, a more and more significant part uh, in the uh, value of space uh, because uh, one of the biggest change uh, uh, that we have lived in space is the, is the fact that we are not anymore considering space as an objective but space as just an element of a uh, much wider value chain, end-to-end -end value chain, reaching the end customers. And this is very important to reach the end customers because the revenues of the value chain are coming from the customers. Uh, and just take the, the statistics, the, the value of the space economy in the world in 2019 has been evaluated at 420 billions of dollars less than 10% of that value is in space. 2% for the launch services, 5% for the satellites. The rest, more than 90%, is on ground. Being divided almost on a 50-50 basis between the ground systems and the services. Meaning that the value of, of the chain is on ground, not in space. Space is the enabling part of the value chain. And it's not anymore the architecture of a space infrastructure which is important, but the, the architecture of the value chain, which is very different. And, uh, and the architecture of the value chain uh, involves space, but much more than space. A lot of other actors which are not space, and especially the digital actors. And this is the reason why Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, uh, Yuri Milner, they are digital actors. And they have extended their activities towards upstream, towards the space part of the value chain, just to be in control. And in return, I think that the space actors, they should extend their activities downstream towards the data processing and the, the delivery of uh, information rather than data. And for that, they have either to uh, integrate digital uh, skills or to partner with digital actors. 
by the way, this is what NASA is doing with Nokia for the telecommunication on the moon, or uh, SpaceX with Motorola for uh, the uh, delivery of the signals, the use of the signals of the Starlink uh, constellation. So that is the first example, building the bridge between uh, the space actors and the digital actors. The second example is the, the, the bridge between the, the space actors and the resource actors. Uh, that is also an important uh, aspect of what Luxembourg is doing. Because the exploitation of uh, space resources is, is something which is not new. Carl Sagan was already writing that in the 80s more than 40 years ago, uh, saying that uh, the, the use of uh, space resources will be a fantastic breakthrough in the way we are making uh, missions in space. But it, it was just a, a dream for, uh, for decades, started to become uh, more of fiction. Uh, when the US in 2015, they have uh, uh, put uh, the Space Act uh, uh, defining a legal framework for the exploitation of uh, uh, utilization, the exploitation of space resources in 2015, followed very quickly by Luxembourg, which has been the, the first in Europe and the second in the world to, to develop the space resource initiatives. Again, it was still a fiction a couple of years ago, but the fiction is becoming a reality. And it's becoming a reality because, and thanks to the Lunar Exploration Program, and especially the Artemis Program. Because Lunar Exploration and Artemis Program, they are putting a sense of urgency in that exploitation of space resources, which was missing for decades. But when you think to have a, a lunar base on, on the moon in 2028, you cannot sustain a lunar base without exploiting the lunar resources. And this is the reason why the uh, activities on lunar resources is now uh, a reality. More and more uh, uh, experiments are now done to see how we can extract oxygen from, uh, from the lunar regolith or uh, how we can extract uh, metals from the, the lunar regolith because uh, oxygen is uh, uh, a fuel, is a source of energy, and, uh, and is also a life support for, for astronauts. And you, we cannot transport this oxygen from planet Earth. So we shall have to exploit the lunar resources. And this is where the resource industry is important. Because the resource industry on planet Earth, this is, they have developed a lot of technologies and uh, processes to to extract uh, the, the, the resources on planet Earth, uh, not only on ground, but underground, under the sea. So a lot of technologies and processes which can be used in space. Because we should not spend too much time to develop <laughs> specific technologies for space. Let's try to go quickly, and this is where the sense of urgency is. is, 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 is so the best is to take the, the ground technologies and processes and to take them on the moon. Because if they were fantastic, we shall have uh, saved a lot of time and a lot of money. And if they don't work, we shall learn why they are not working. So this is where, again, the connection, the bridge between the space resources and the... Uh, and the uh, the space industry and the resource industry is so important. And that bridge is under development in, uh, in Luxembourg. So these two uh, illustrations, uh, uh, digital space and digital sectors, space and resource sectors, only, are only two among more and more connections between the space sector uh, and the ground sector. There is less and less uh, border between space and, uh, and planet Earth. I think that it's one continuum and we should not continue to isolate space from planet Earth. And uh, I would like to be already in one year from now, first of all, because uh, I, uh, 
I shall be in Rome, I hope so, uh, rather than uh, at home. Uh, and the second point is that theoretically in one year from now, uh, Tom Cruise will have been on board the ISS. And I am sure that Tom Cruise on ISS, that will produce another significant change in the way we are looking at uh, uh, space. So, vive moi l'année prochaine. Thank you very much. Welcome to our speakers and to all people following us. Uh, we started this morning with uh, a first flight in our webinar with the government represented by Giampaolo Manzella, Gianluca Dettori, longtime VC, Enrico Resmini, uh, driving uh, National Innovation Fund, and Maria Cristina Falvella, Chairman uh, Fondazione Amaldi. Uh, now we have uh, our second flight with Jean-Jacques Tortora, European Space Policy Institute, one of the major players in uh, trying to understand, of course, the space economy landscape. Uh, Mauro Piermaria, innovation responsible and director for uh, uh, Agenzia Spaziale Italiana, the Italian Space Agency. Paolo Carini, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, EGEA energy and utility company, Elisa Scambari, VC, an Italian VC, uh, one of the first uh, in, in our landscape to, to invest in, uh, in space economy. She will, uh, she will tell us uh, about uh, her experience in uh, investing in the space economy domain. We, we, we are waiting for Francesco Profumo, Chairman Compagnia di San Paolo and uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler, both very involved and uh, very interested in, uh, in the space economy landscape. Just a few minutes and uh, we can start with uh, this second flight. Maybe also uh, we can start with Jean-Jacques, with the, if you agree. With, with the, great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for coming. <laughs> no, thank you uh, so much for uh, having me. Uh, it's, um, I would say, my pleasure and my duty as a European Space Policy Institute to uh, reply positively to such kind uh, invitations. Uh, actually, SP is, uh, uh, for those who are not familiar with us, is a one of its kind organization. It's uh, the only, uh, I would say, think tank fully dedicated to uh, the reflection and analysis related to, uh, to the further developments of the, the European space policy. So we are based uh, in Vienna. Uh, we uh, have uh, uh, a number of members, uh, so founding members uh, are the, the European Space Agency and uh, and and um, the, the FFG, the, the Austrian uh, Re Development Agency. Uh, but we have also among our members uh, the Italian Space Agency, CNES, uh, DLR, and and many more. Uh, our role is really to uh, come up with uh, informed views. Uh, and um, and recommendations to the European decision makers and um, and definitely economy space economy is one of our pillars uh, so we base our, mostly our action of first monitoring of what's going on in in the space sector worldwide and second to uh, to uh, analyze and uh, and um, try to anticipate uh, how this could uh, further develop uh, and in particular in in economy uh, for that now i would like to uh, to share with you uh, my screen and the presentation that uh, i have prepared for today i hope you can uh, you can uh, see my uh, my slides um, so it's about uh, the new space and economy uh, and it's a focus on the... Sorry, we don't see your presentation. You don't? 
Uh, I'm sorry. But we uh, we would love also your speech if you you if you cannot share our, your presentation, it's okay. Well, I have some graphic uh, stuff, uh, so it would be great if uh, you could uh, see okay. it. Is okay. It now? Okay. Okay. Fine. So it's uh, a focus uh, on the, the private investment and uh, entrepreneurship uh, trends uh, which are taking off and uh, with a specific focus on what's going on in, uh, in Europe. So first, a few words about, uh, about the, the new space. Uh, so it's often questioned what's new about the new space. Uh, so uh, uh, the new space is first a new public approach. I will come back to that later. Uh, it's about also newcomers, new entrants in our sector, which create a new in industry setup, which come up with uh, new solutions, which create new markets, and then seek for new uh, private investments. Uh, and, um, and, and definitely uh, the, the, the point that I would like to make here is that uh, everything here starts and, uh, and uh, finishes with public action, where the, the public is present at the very beginning, uh, to uh, support mostly technology, to, uh, I would say, facilitate the emergence of startups. But then in the end, public is also uh, requested to, uh, to um, uh, also when needed, uh, to um, meet and to put together ap appropriate market uh, conditions. So the, 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 the new entrants, uh, I will not. I will go fast because uh, I will not repeat what others have said before me. Are non-space companies eager to expand their business and to cross-fertilize uh, ICT and and space? And uh, we we found there a number of space startups leveraging private public funding to address new markets or existing markets with uh, new solutions. And these new uh, entrants, they uh, seek a new investment. And the new private investment uh, is, is growing fast. Uh, actually, the, the, the compound annual growth rate reporting uh, since uh, the, the, the year 2000 is uh, estimated around 15%, which is quite growth and quite a, an, an impressive growth and which uh, makes space, I would say, similar to the uh, a number of other fast growing uh, sector. Uh, so globally, uh, worldwide, there is the Bryce report, which uh, re uh, has identified a global private investment up to uh, 5.7 billion in 2019. And this is, um, I would say, met up with a mix of venture capital and other sources like debt, price, grants, acquisition, etc. But I will not uh, insist more on that. The, 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 the question here is quid of Europe. Where is Europe standing there? And, um, and, and actually, uh, the, the, the assessment that we made uh, of, uh, of the evolution of the situation in Europe is the following. We see on, on the left a graphic where you have the number of the deals um, that have been reported uh, every year since uh, 2014, both in number of deals and in uh, uh, overall amount. And uh, what we see is that uh, in uh, 29, in 2020, um, we uh, we and, and and the year is not totally over yet, but we have already already uh, reported. We have been reported uh, 400 million euro invested uh, in in the in the new space sector which is uh, quite a, an impressive growth. It's uh, a, a plus 40% as compared to, uh, to uh, the, the previous year. And, um, and, uh, and this, um, I would say, investment is, um, is uh, I would say, concentrated in a, a few success stories. And the top five success stories represent 70% of this total. So the top five are... Uh, are Illustrated on, on the right side of my of my slide, we find here Kines in the more localization uh, domain, Ice Eye in remote sensing, uh, reaction engines in UK for uh, propulsion, Prigens, um, which is uh, in uh, in France uh, for Earth observation, and uh, uh, Minarek in uh, Germany, uh, which is about uh, telecommunications.
So this, uh, this investment is quite uh, scattered uh, all across Europe. But, uh, but last year, I would say, well, this year in 2020, uh, we found out that, uh, that uh, UK, Finland, uh, France, Germany, and uh, Luxembourg have been, uh, have been on, uh, on top. Um, one thing that I would like to, uh, to stress here is that, uh, is that 60 to 80 percent of this investment uh, comes from European risk takers, which is quite interesting because it tells us how much uh, the, 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 the new space remains, I would say, a domestic story. Now, uh, how do we? The question is, how do we compare to the to the, to the rest of the world, and uh, and in particular to the the United States? So I mentioned earlier the Bryce report, uh, but um, actually, if we if we look in detail, uh, in greater detail, what's uh, what's in this uh, this report, we find out that seventy percent of the of the amount of investment reported by Bryce is concentrated in the big four. So the big four that are SpaceX, Blue Origin, OneWeb, and uh, and Virgin uh, Galactic, uh, and and actually. The, the, the first question is uh, is to define a perimeter when we uh, talk about the new space. Can we compare a small startup with SpaceX? Well, obviously not. Uh, and um, and we we need to uh, to agree on a, a definition of a startup or of a new a new space company. Uh, and in particular, when it comes to the downstream, uh, Jean-Jacques Dornin rightly pointed out that much of the new space economy is taking place. On Earth, but um, but we have also then to uh, to decide and to define uh, to what extent some companies can be considered as uh, as uh, being part of this new space movement. Uh, I will take just the example of Uber. Uber, of, of course, they exploit some space resources and it's part of their business. But should we account for them and and their and their turnover in the so-called new space or not? Okay, this is the kind of question we have to address. But globally, uh, I would say that uh, without entering into the detail, uh, I would just uh, limit myself to just considering the case of the, 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 the overall investment in the, in the new space, but putting aside these big four. And then when, when we do that, uh, we of course we, uh, we, we concentrate on a, on, a, on a totally different population. And... Um, and uh, and this population is quite still quite representative of what's taking place uh, in the in the in the in the new space and uh, when we put aside this uh, this big four then we we can compare uh, i think having having similar population of companies we can compare what's going on in the us and in the, in europe and what uh, this is the, what i tried to uh, to uh, highlight here or to put in evidence here in with this slide where on, on the left you have the situation in the United States where you see the bu public budgets, the private investments, and then the ratio between public and private and the same on the right side with Europe. So the first conclusion is that of course the private investment remains, uh, remains marginal, but we should take that with a pinch of salt because the, pri the, the public investment uh, encompasses a number of things like uh, uh, the, the big science, uh, the, the, the exploration, the, uh, and a number of uh, defense-related investments, while the new space is concentrated on commercial applications. And if we now, uh, it could be necessary maybe to try to, to, to refine a bit more, uh, comparing what the, the, is, uh, is dedicated in the private, in the public uh, budgets to the development of commercial activities. And if we compare to what's going on in the, in the private sector with the new space, we would see that this is not neglig negligible at all. But, uh, but what we see, and the conclusion that I would like to make here is that the big four put put aside the situation between Europe and the US is quite comparable. So last year uh, in the US, okay, they did better. They were, the, the, the level of private investment reached up to 8.3% uh, of, the, of the public uh, budgets, uh, public expenditures. Um, but in 2020, in 20, uh, 
20, uh, it, uh, it is 1.6, while in Europe we had 1.9 and 3.4 in 2020. So meaning that we are this year doing better than the US. Once again, I repeat, the big four put aside. So what, uh, my, my, what could, I, could I say as, as a conclusion is that, um, well, first, there is a massive growth in the private investment in European startups. And I just now focus on Europe. So from 50 million in 2014 up to 400 million uh, this year. It is highly concentrated in a few success stories. And the question, the key question is whether we, um, we should seek in the future for European unicorns that might develop as the, the big four in the United States did, or should Europe have um, and, and consider maybe a, a more, uh, I would say, balanced approach uh, in, uh, in um, sustaining and supporting multiple uh, or in multiplicity of, of players. Second, the private investment is okay, can be at first sight considered as very low, but this um, must, uh, is not eligible, as I said, and it must be considered as a complement to the public investment, not of, of, uh, as a replacement. And all this uh, put together, I would say that, uh, that Europe, my conclusion is that Europe is, is really catching up with the United States, and we uh, should not have any complex uh, as uh, when we compare to the to what's going on in the United States. Now, uh, I would like to say you a few words about uh, a survey that uh, SP uh, issues on a yearly basis uh, and addressing a number of questions to startups and to uh, new space European uh, players. Uh, so, so scattered across the whole of the European territory. And uh, just very quickly, uh, the, 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 the conclusions that we, uh, we draw from this, uh, from this uh, survey are quite interesting. So first of all, we uh, tried to uh, ask the companies to um, highlight uh, their, the way they get their funding. So, considering what, how they got, they were, they used to be funded in the past to read the situation where they are and the, the funding that they foresee or they, they anticipate for the, the, their future development. And what we see is that uh, startups uh, make it on the on initial seed investment from private savings from internal and, and self-funding. Uh, and when they, they, they consider the future, then, uh, then they would expect still some self-funding, but also a, a, a larger support uh, from, uh, from governments in forms of subsidies. And most importantly, uh, they would seek uh, getting funding from the private sector through venture uh, capital. Uh, which is quite, uh, quite a, an, an, an interesting conclusion is that it's uh, the, the the funding scheme uh, with regard to the to the startups and new space company is not exactly the same when they are in the very first step on their developments and where they are considering uh, the, the 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 further growth. Uh, and um, we asked them also to um, to reply to the question of where they they see their major uh, challenges. Uh, in raising capital and access to funding, and um, and their conclusion is definitely that uh, they need to reach out uh, to uh, potential investors, and uh, and and this is where they have the most uh, difficulties. Then comes the burden and delays, the lack of knowledge of available options, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is interesting because actually the public action uh, when it comes to support to these startups is mostly. Uh, concentrated on the access to finance, and uh, when we we, we ask the, the 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 question to the to the these small companies of uh, where they they what they expect from from the public sector uh, when it comes to uh, scaling up, the, then uh, then uh, then their 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 replies are are quite interesting and uh, and um, should be really considered to shape uh, to better shape maybe the public policy there. Uh, so first, their major concern is is of course to uh, to get uh, to make their revenues grow to uh, to acquire uh, customers 
um, to ensure proper uh, cash flow liquidity, uh, to, uh, to, to support the development of their products. And raising capital comes only in the, in the fifth position. Uh, and where this is where the public players are are concentrating their efforts and uh, on the other hand uh, when uh, when we we uh, we consider the, the second uh, column um, what they also expect is a growth of public demand on mark on their markets uh, and the public institutions acting as anchor customers so there, uh, I would say, while the, the, the public sector is concentrated on the offer side, then we see that the, the startups are most uh, are mostly expecting uh, the the or expecting yeah a support of the the private the public sector on the demand uh, side, and um, I would like maybe to to conclude on this um, uh, just to uh, well to. Um, to conclude that uh, our uh, survey uh, has uh, clearly uh, put forward that uh, the, 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 there is a mix of private investment and, and public subsidies that are needed. Uh, so private investment mostly in venture capital and, uh, and public as the, in the framework of the startup policy like prices, support to R&D and programs, of course. Uh, and um, and uh, the... The, 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 I would say the expectations of the companies would be more on the market side uh, in, and their hope is to uh, get to a um, I would say much more like what we might call a single European market uh, which uh, can be defined as at least interoperable local markets and, uh, and where the demands could be aggregated. So the, 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 at the moment, we uh, with ESA in particular has uh, pretty well, I would say, understood and, and captured these uh, requests from the the the, the, the companies and, 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 and industry and, um, and 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 pay substantial efforts in ensuring that startups can address the public demand. For the time being, I would say that seems to me that it's less clear on the EU, EU side while a major share of, of the potential uh, are, are, are there, of course, when it comes to the, to the demand and to the services. So uh, for those who would like to have more details about our, this, uh, this uh, survey, uh, please uh, visit our website and you will, you will be able to download it. Uh, so Space Venture Europe 2018 for the time being is the most recent one, but the, the 2020 edition should be uh, published uh, in, uh, say not later than uh, February. And you will find also plenty of other material uh, related to uh, what we do at, uh, at SP. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jean-Jacques, for your inspiring speech. Very interesting. It seems to me that the, the key word for uh, a, a right synergy between public and private and to establish a public-private partnership is a kind of smart procurement, could be. Uh, otherwise, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will lost a round and uh, maybe also that strategic procurement is one of the key to access uh, to market. Uh, let's say also USA are moving uh, by far on, on this side and uh, we know that for example uh, uh, they choose uh, more or less little national champions uh, and make them grow. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the Palantir case study with the cybersecurity focus and uh, without uh, um, the, the, the public spending, of course, Palantir uh, should be uh, the unicorn we know today. Mm -hmm. but say thank, you, thank you again. And uh, I would like to move uh, and switch to Elisa. Uh, Elisa Scambari is uh, uh, one of the most brilliant uh, VC in Italy. Uh, she drives Red Seed, it is a VC firm operating in uh, tech companies. Uh, her experience is very interesting because 
he has been the, one of the of the first investor in the new space economy, uh, choosing and picking up uh, Leaf Space, a very interesting startup in our landscape. Please, Elisa, give us your comments. Thank you, Salvo, for this introduction. <laughs> very good introduction for me. Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Um, I am uh, Elisa, Chairman and uh, Managing Partner of uh, Red Seed Ventures. Uh, Red Seed is uh, uh, an investment company focused in the venture capital asset class. Uh, we invest in very innovative technology startups and uh, um, all, across the, all across industries. We invest from uh, uh, medical devices to digital companies. But uh, the new space economy is uh, one of the most interesting sectors uh, we, we look at. We started investing in this sector about uh, five years ago. So uh, as Salvo said, I think that uh, we, uh, we were one of the first investors in, uh, uh, in this space, basically uh, venture capital and uh, space economy. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, not a very common sector. And uh, we invested in uh, Leaf Space. Uh, Leaf, uh, I'm, uh, I'm chairman of, uh, of Leaf Space too. Uh, Leaf Space is uh, a startup, is a spin off from the Politecnico di Milano. And uh, um, it is in the ground segment. So basically, it operates uh, antennas and uh, ground facilities tailored for microsatellite operators. And uh, um, when uh, we, uh, the, the mission and the motto of the company is to simplify access to the new space. Uh, when we invested in a company, basically the company was uh, at a very early stage, so it was a good investment. Uh, then we continued to invest in the company. Now the company raised uh, about uh, um, 8 million euro, and uh, uh, we are. Uh, it, it is growing. Uh, we started with the three founders uh, and now the company has uh, more than 25 employees. Uh, most of them are uh, engineers uh, and service clients uh, uh, all around the world from, uh, uh, from small clients uh, also to very big and famous clients. Uh, for example, Virgin Galactic, one of the, the, the big four, is, uh, is among them, and we, we hope to serve uh, also the, the other three. Um, mm. So basically, this is uh, Leap Space uh, is our first investment in the new space economy. Uh, we are very happy with it. Uh, we, we think that uh, the new space economy is, uh, is going to grow uh, double digit also in the coming years uh, and we are really interested to, to, to continue investing uh, in the sector. Of course, uh, uh, as investor, uh, we have to, um, we, we need to have some portfolio synergies, but also uh, some portfolio diversification. So uh, we wish to, to, to invest in other companies uh, all through the, 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 the value chain. Um, I just want to repeat a concept from the uh, Jean-Jacques speech and uh, um, the new space economy and in general space of course is uh, a global market by definition. So uh, companies in the new space economy um, uh, as a, a global competition. So it is very important to, um, to for, it is very important for, uh, for companies in this sector to have uh, a lot of money just to ju just to be very clear because uh, US company for example they play with a lot of money and the new space economy companies are capital intensive companies so uh, to, to have some uh, to have some chance to win this global competition we the investor we need to really um, put a lot of money in companies and uh, to do it we, we have to, uh, to create a collaboration between private and public uh, investors. Uh, I think that strategic, uh, of course, for other investors, but, uh, um, but uh, for, for, you, for Europe in, uh, in general. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, um, 
I would uh, I would love uh, to to hear from uh, Francesco Profumo uh, his opening remarks on uh, new space and economy. Francesco is uh, chairman uh, of Compagnia San Paolo, uh, maybe one of the maybe the most important bank foundation in Italy, and uh, also chairman in Fondazione Bruno Kessler FBK based in Trentino and it is one of the most interesting research institute and center of high research in our country. Thank you Francesco for coming, please. Uh, uh... Thank you, and thank you Salvo for your nice words and uh, I'm very pleased uh, to participate in this uh, new space uh, economy uh, roundtable technical session. Uh, as you said, uh, um, I'm right now the chairman of uh, the Compagnia di San Paolo, that is one of the largest uh, uh, bank foundation in Italy. In the meantime, uh, uh, maybe as you know, the, the bank foundation, they have uh, two uh, major track, uh, one uh, as investors, and the second one uh, as a charity actor. In this sense, uh, uh, the Compagnia uh, has a, 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 an overall assets of over 7 billion, and 45% uh, of this money is uh, invested uh, in uh, institutional assets. This means for us uh, the, uh, the investment uh, in Intesa San Paolo Bank, uh, in Banca d'Italia in, the, in the GDP and the, and the other uh, 4.5 billion is uh, invested in what we call a, a distributed asset. Among this uh, distributed assets uh, we have uh, what we, we call a, a mission related asset. This means uh, the possibility to invest uh, uh, in our territory mainly, uh, money for what could be uh, one investment for uh, uh, the real uh, economy related to what are the major um, direction for, for our uh, foundation. Among this, uh, we have uh, the two uh, mainstream that are in one side of the education and the other one uh, is uh, research and uh, innovation. And right now I want to talk about uh, this uh, second uh, path that is uh, research and innovation. The, the, in Torino uh, we have a quite large uh, technological uh, campus where is located the um, Politecnico di Torino, but uh, in the meantime uh, also the OGR that is an infrastructure where in the last few years, we had a good investment or great investment in uh, innovation. And not too far from there, there is also the um, innovation center of Intesa San Paolo. This means that there is an ecosystem quite uh, interesting. We don't have uh, only infrastructure, but we have uh, uh, technical capabilities on that. And we have also the finance. And this is what uh, is uh, the, the point that uh, I want uh, to put on the table. This uh, interaction between uh, these three factors is uh, the, uh, a good example for our country where we can uh, start uh, from uh, the, the university system where we have uh, good ideas and a good, uh, um, good, good project, but uh, we need uh, in some way to help this project to, to come out from uh, the, the university lab. In particular, in the, in the, in the Polytechnic in Torito, we have a, a great department on space uh, um, activities. And this is one of the, the major actor that we have uh, on the territory on this side. In the meantime, uh, in the Torino area, uh, we have uh, also a good environment related to industrial uh, companies in uh, the, the space sector, just uh, to mention two of these, 
Uh, one uh, is uh, the Thales Selenia, and the other one uh, is Aviospace. And then we have a hundred of the, uh, small and medium enterprises in this sector. This, this means that we have a really a, a nice uh, uh, ecosystem uh, from the industrial point of view. Then uh, um, in, the, in the campus that uh, we have in Torino, starting from the university, as a Compagnia di San Paolo, we invested in uh, all uh, the uh, system from uh, the knowledge creation to the private equity system. And uh, we invested uh, through, uh, uh, we can say, uh, a type of uh, infrastructure. This means that we set up uh, one uh, new company that the name is Lifty that is a financial company, but in the meantime, is also a company with 15 people high-skilled in new startup creation and also as a, as, a, um, as, as a system to uh, accompanying this, this new startup. And in the last few years, uh, we, we really grow up from this point uh, of view and uh, we have already some uh, uh, very excellent uh, uh, results. In the meantime, uh, this means that uh, we, we have the, the, the possibility uh, to uh, invest since the beginning in the university level with the uh, POC, this means proof of concept, that we already run uh, two different editions. And uh, we, starting from that, we created uh, more than uh, 20 projects that are ready to become startup. But in the meantime, uh, we have uh, also um, a, a good ecosystem, a ecosystem from the financial point of view. This means that uh, we invest uh, in seeds, then uh, we did in early stage and uh, we invest uh, also in uh, uh, private equity. This means that uh, in the this Torino area, we, don't talk, we do not uh, create only new startup, but then we have uh, the possibility to follow this startup and uh, to uh, create the condition that, that they can grow in, in our area. And then we have also the possibility to attract a new uh, startup coming from uh, our uh, other part in the world. So just uh, I want to mention one uh, that uh, is an American startup. The, the name is a TWAP, and the the, um, the major uh, startup there is a, a Marco Villa that uh, was created in the Los Angeles area, and then uh, a few years ago they moved to Torino, and now they have around 40 people there. And that um, we can say that uh, the most interesting activities is uh, in Turin. And following these uh, ideas of the creation of this ecosystem, uh, Compagnia di San Paolo also invested in uh, the Primo Space Fund. And then uh, really it's quite interesting that uh, putting all together is possible really to create uh, one uh, good uh, a relation between the different actors in one side and the other one is to create the condition for a new economy, a new economy that is related to the space economy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Francesco. Thanks a lot. Uh, we cannot uh, dig deeper other than speaking with the Italian Space Agency, I think. So, Mauro Piermaria, uh, which is responsible for innovation in, in our national agency. Uh, please. Thanks, Salvo. Thanks, Salvo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a very big pleasure to be here, talk with you and uh, the people, uh, I guess, around the world are looking at us. Uh, as you say before, uh, we are splitting in two our intervention. I want to uh, talk about uh, what the Italian Space Agency have done in the past years and what Italian Space Agency can do to improve the activities 
on this space economy uh, sector. So uh, the world, the, the space sector is changed a lot in, these, in the last four to five years, especially from our observatory on the space agency, we've seen a, a big impact of the newcomers coming from the private um, world. I remember everything started around, for us in Italy, around 2015, starting talking about uh, OEM for the space economy. In fact, I remember 2016, our government uh, launched what uh, was called uh, uh, Space Economy Piano Stretch. It was a big investment uh, trying to put together resources from the government, the local authorities, our regions, and privates in order to uh, promote activities in the space field that could have a commercial and economic impact. Uh, the Italian Space Agency, I guess, first among the others in Europe, uh, started looking at these activities, uh, try to, to, to start new, new, new ventures, new initiatives in order to, to, to follow these, 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 uh, these changes. Uh, for example, we started uh, creating, uh, uh, together with the other private partners, the Fondazione uh, Eduardo Maldi, which is now <laughs> organizing this, uh, the second edition of this uh, space economy. This, this conference is also a consequence of our action, because this is uh, uh, the, the first uh, uh, conference fully dedicated to the space economy. So, uh, this is a, a very consequence of the, of the activities we've done the last few years. Uh, we started uh, looking around to see why we don't have a venture capital fund in Italy, uh, strictly dedicated to the space. So, we started a discussion with partners, uh, and I see uh, some of them around these virtual tables, uh, to see if there was uh, a possibility to have also in Italy, uh, let me say in Europe, because uh, the Primo Space Fund, which has been launched this, uh, this August, uh, is among the, the, is the first or the second in Europe, uh, it depends on the point of view, uh, venture capital fund fully dedicated to the space. So we started discussion in 2018 and now we see uh, the fruits of this. Uh, so, uh, if I, uh, I also uh, get back, I see also the activities we done through our affiliated companies, because the Italian Space Agency, since it was born, uh, always had uh, a point of view on the economic uh, development of the space activity. That's why we have uh, four affiliated companies uh, through which we do uh, activities uh, that we cannot directly uh, do uh, at agency level. Uh, so, uh, let me say that this is the past, and uh, at the end of this process, uh, we've seen a uh, big uh, development of the activities on the space economy. Uh, as was I heard before, like uh, from also Mr. Tortorai, is very important because uh, the public budgets uh, is uh, still uh, the most important as we talk about investment in space. Uh, more or less, uh, it depends uh, of the, if you look at uh, uh, Europe or US, uh, you've seen that the, the, the balance between uh, public spending and private is still around 1 to 10 or even less. But if you look at 2015 and 16 in Europe, uh, you see that uh, this, the amount of private investment in space is uh, grown four times. So four times. Numbers are still low, but the growth is very high. So this is a very important sign. So at the end, in order to close the first intervention, I would say that also the agency uh, had found the, uh, you know, they need to structure also itself to follow this. That's why since a, a very few time has been created a unique department that is a collapsing of the activities related to space economy. And we, I talk about affiliated companies, states already, the agency. Technology transfer means accelerating programs, incubators, means 
in impact of the economy uh, studies and also let's say all the coordination of all the space activities uh, um, on space economy activities included financial instruments so also the agency i see also this time more or less first of among the others uh, european agencies a structured a de dedicated department uh, working on the space economy which is an, an important sign uh, telling us that also the public uh, in the, since five to five, four or five years has changed a lot. So this is the picture of what we've done up to now at the Italian Space Agency. And maybe later on I can talk a little more about what we see on the future. Thanks a lot, Mauro. Thank you very much. Very interesting, uh, your comment. We, we look forward to, to hear more in the second round table. And... Uh, Paolo Carini, welcome and thank, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. You drive uh, an energy company, an utility company. Uh, of course, you see, you see the world uh, under a certain angle view. And uh, my, my suggestion is, uh, of course, uh, let's try together to bridge uh, a link uh, between uh, the planet and the space, the outer space, uh, uh, following a path on sustainability, climate challenge. Uh, I know that you are very focused on, on this uh, and we need, of course, to establish a bridge uh, because we can go out in the space if we still have a planet, by the way. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your words. Thank you for your invitation, and uh, of course, I'm uh, as uh, and as Francesco as Franco uh, said before. I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, talking you by the ground, and anyway, is also in your words, since um, uh, we are a, a multi-utility, so we are taking care about uh, environment and energy. And uh, environment is very, very important in these moments. Well, since many years, it should be more important, truly speaking, but it's now taken in a real consideration. And uh, uh, new space economy could be unbelievable, interesting and important for, to us in the, development, the new development of the new world and of the new environment. Under this point of view, um, our company is not so small. We are the sixth, uh, number six under a dimensional point of view in, uh, in Italy with about 1 billion euros, but we are the first unlisted. So this is also moving to, an, and then I give some samples, uh, but um, our partners are also stakeholders and we have public and private. So I remember in the in Chen Jack words this the importance of new relationship between public and private world, and this is in the roots of the world, but uh, probably we forgot under many points of view. So now we dis we are discovering <laughs> as modern, very very ancient roots, right, Chen Jack? So we need we are everyone is part of the same environment. So going to some focus, uh, we were born and we still have our head culture here in Alba, which is the kind of province of the Italian province. Uh, Barolo and Barbaresco were born here, a wine, but also Ferrero was born here, Nutella, and they still have here their more most, uh, important or biggest uh, uh, production plant. From here, we are going now everywhere in, the, in, in Italy, particularly in the provinces, but I give you some samples. We are focusing on precision VT culture, vineyards. So uh, our wine producers are very interested in knowing, for example, how is the heat on the ground? How is moving the heat on the ground? But everywhere on a wide area, to recognize the different kind of heat, different kind of colors, different kinds of uh, grass, of animals moving. 
this is unbelievable important to vineyards just to produce wine and uh, in a healthy way in an efficient way in this moment we are cooperating together with them the, many of them are our partners our stakeholders but anyway the thing is we just have now a kind of feeling <laughs> we measure heat ground by ground we measure we color ground by ground what could be space economy uh, or what could be space under this point of view we are looking toward here on Barolo Banvaresco, but maybe in Tuscany but maybe everywhere we have vineyards everywhere in Italy and not only in Italy and a second thing um, is for example nuts uh, as as you probably know uh, oh no more as you probably know the name of Nutella Terrero comes from nuts because uh, they were born here also so how could it be possible and probably Jean-Jacques you could aid us you could help us very much to understand how nuts are growing up how it is again heat colors animals and so on but not only to distinguish between north and south of Alba but uh, or Piemonte uh but everywhere in italy and probably also in the rest of the world under this point of view uh another suggestion i join with the excellent uh, speech of francesco profumo it's not just to be friend which is driving me to this kind of consideration but uh we have also some excellent scientific center here in italy we have an heritage we are talking with deep relationship with your successor uh, Guido Saracco, of course, of Politecnico Torino, but well, not only, but we have Politecnico Milano, of course, Elisa was speaking about this. So we could join and build a new society, a new old society. <laughs> Joining together our capabilities, our relationships, and uh, Space economy, I, I just give you this particular example, just one example regarding agriculture, because we are in a UNESCO heritage. Uh, agricultural heritage is very important here, but I look toward many things. Movement of people, of course. Safety, movement, uh, movement of everything. So we, as uh, multi-utility, we are we have an, act, an excellent opportunity to drive in touch to houses, to industries. We go every day, the whole day, in every single house, in every single industry. But we need a new development, and probably the space is giving us a new, this new development under many points of view. I, I also am an engineer at the end, <laughs> if I remember this well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you very much. We have still uh, less than half an hour, maybe 20 minutes, uh, to have a second round between us. So we can try to have uh, at least five minutes each. Uh, to address uh, your vision to the future in uh, from here to to 10 years uh, and our road ahead uh, envisioning uh, the relation between uh, space uh, and our planet and uh, also following the Jean Jacques suggestion which is the place of Europe when where and where we are going with uh, with our Without eight, just start with uh, if you agree, we will start with Elisa, then Jean Jacques, Francesco, Mauro, and Paul again. Okay, thank you.
Okay, thank you, Salvo. So uh, I completely agree what uh, I think that uh, we are all saying that uh, uh, a cooperation between public and private uh, is uh, strategic uh, to make the new space economy uh, big and strong and to give it a chance to win in uh, this uh, global competition uh, because there is a global competition, of course, in the space. And uh, um, just very, very, very quick, I think that we invested in this, uh, uh, in the new space economy about five years ago. And uh, uh, as Mauro said, it was very, very different. Uh, five years ago, new space economy was the little brother in the aerospace family. <laughs> and, uh, but now technology is going uh, very, very fast. And microsatellites now can do a lot of very good job in a very, very cheap way. And this is opening the space basically to a lot of new, uh, uh, new players, new commercial players, and not only commercial, of course. Um, from uh, a, a, an investor point of view, uh, this is an opportunity. And uh, we, we believed in this opportunity uh, five years ago. Of course, we believe in it more now. So we want to continue to invest in it. We hope for uh, this collaboration, uh, public and private, because uh, we really think uh, it is strategic uh, to, to get more investment, more capitals to companies, but also to facilitate uh, the access of this company, the, the, the collaboration, the uh, industrial partnership with big, big players. For example, we are working on a very uh, important partnership with uh, um, an Italian key, key player of the uh, aerospace segment. Uh, we are really close to it, but uh, I cannot say, of course, because it is not closed now. Uh, and it is really important to, uh, to reach uh, a strategic clients and to have uh, uh, more uh, more credibility uh, in the world. So um, again, public private collaboration is key. Uh, another another thing I think is that another thing I want to say is that. Uh, we are working very well with the European community. For example, we, um, we, we won a, a 2 million free grant from them because uh, uh, there is a particular attention for, uh, um, for the, the, the new space economy. So I think that is uh, another uh, collaboration uh, very useful, of course. Uh, yeah, it could be more useful, uh, 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 more, uh, uh, more deep, uh, more uh, um, continuous collaboration. Um, so, just to conclude, uh, we, we want to continue to invest uh, in this sector. Uh, we are uh, raising um, 120 million venture capital fund and the new space economy will be, of course, uh, one of the strategic sectors we are going to invest in. So, of course, uh, we will uh, do our part as, uh, as private investor, and we hope to collaborate with all of you uh, to make this sector, uh, the, the, the European and the Italian, uh, in, uh, in the global uh, scenario. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you very much. We have a question from the public, and uh, I try to address uh, directly to Jean-Jacques. And if everyone after would uh, could uh, add uh, even more, uh, we can discuss also in the closing remarks. Uh, okay, uh, there are great expe expectations about the European Recovery Fund. We should be targeted to innovation. Are there opportunities that the space economy may benefit from recovery fund? And for Mauro after, is the uh, Italian Space Agency involved in the recovery fund plans? Okay. Jean-Jacques, please. Well, I'll put aside for the time being this question on the, on the, on the recovery fund. Um, we have... Uh, made some assessment on the consequences of the COVID on the space sector, uh, but, uh, but I will elaborate on, on, on this a bit later. Uh, now, the one thing that I want, would like to, to stress is uh, uh, maybe that we... we uh, maybe Francesco can mute because there is some noise. Sorry. 
You cannot hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you can? I can hear, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, 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 the first point I would like to make is uh, to, um, to uh, maybe remind also that when we talk about competition, there is a competition, of course, between uh, the Europe, Europe, Jacques, Europe. Sorry, yeah. Jacques. Sorry, Jacques. You have to put the mute on the other window on the backstage because I guess your voice get into the other microphone. Okay, is it better now? Ah, okay, I'm sorry for that. Um, the, I'm yeah. an engineer. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to be one uh, long time ago, but uh, okay, I apologize. Uh, so the, the 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 first thing uh, I'm putting aside the the, the question on on the on the on the, on the recovery fund um, uh, for the time being, uh, and as I said, we had SP, we have published recently report on the consequences of COVID-19 on the space sector. Uh, but the, the, the point that I would like to make is to highlight that when we, uh, we consider the competition, of course, of course there is a strong competition between European companies and the, the rest of the world mostly and primarily the US companies. But there is also another uh, competition which is be between the ground and space. Uh, and, and, and this competition of course is uh, I would say natural and and it's welcome and it's uh, it's, a, it's it's a good uh, thing to uh, to to have but there is a competition for access to public funds and in space with space we have a problem is that uh, the space capacities are hardly considered as infrastructure uh, for ground uh, in, uh, systems there is no doubt in the in the mind of policy makers that uh, that uh, optical fibers, that networks, etc., cetera, et cetera, are infrastructure, are public infrastructure, and therefore they are fully eligible to the structural funds of the of the EU. When it comes to space capacity, the the demonstration, or in the mind, I would say, of policymakers, it seems that it is not that clear, and we there have a problem because with space uh, we rely only on the uh, horizon programs or r and programs and some dedicated uh, programs that uh, that supports the the, the 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 sector but definitely not to a, a broad range of other investments public investments that could be very very useful to um, to our sector and uh, and and this is something on which uh, i guess we should uh, uh, we should pay efforts so First, on the, on the space side, to convince and to, and to make the points, uh, and and then also on the public side to uh, to have a, maybe a, a broader vision of uh, of what uh, space uh, can uh, do. Uh, and well, for the time being, that's it. Now, on the on the on the COVID and and the recovery fund uh, question, uh, I say <coughs> our assessment is that uh, at first. I would say at, at short, uh, in the short term, uh, the impact on the space uh, sector of the of the COVID crisis has not been, I would say, as dramatic, as terrible as as it has been in in other uh, manufacturing sector, and 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 in particular to our cousin um, uh, sector of of aeronautics. But what we anticipate is that this will come at at a, a, a later stage. So in the in the next few um, in the next few months and maybe a couple of years, uh, this is where the, the 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 because this will impact the the demand uh, on the uh, for for space services uh, which might come from the other industrial sector, and this is where uh, the, the the space will be impacted. So nothing maybe not might be so visible. But uh, but uh, but the impact on the demand might be might be sensitive in the um, in the next few months and years and uh, and we advocate really for uh, carefully considering this situation and advocating for the space sector also being eligible for this recovery fund and and because this question of the of the demand is is absolutely absolutely key. Historically, uh, agencies and, and institutions have been focusing their efforts and their support to the space sector 
on the offer side. And, and this, uh, and, and especially here we, we are dealing today with a new space, the new space, what they are requesting, what, what they are calling for is not that much uh, a, a dedicated effort and a strong effort focused on the, on the offer side, on the development side, but more on the, the demand side. Uh, where, where we're in, in putting together the, 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 the conditions for um, market growth. And, and this shift is very, at, at the moment, a reality in, in industry where, where now we have the development of new downstream service industry, etc. And, and, and at the level of European institutions and agencies, it's uh, a bit difficult to, uh, to uh, totally reshape the, the sense of the action of, of the of the uh, of the agencies which still consider themselves as mostly development uh, bodies uh, and I primarily think of the, the big ones uh, big historical ones uh, here okay that's uh, it for me for, for the time being thank you thanks a lot jean jacques uh, we we can switch uh, to mauro in, in order to to answer the question about uh, italian space agency involvement uh, and if you all agree i would love to to ask uh, francesco to to make the closing remarks after the last uh, uh, short intervention by paolo carini so mauro then paolo and closing remarks uh, by Francesco. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur. Uh, three minutes. First, the answer. Yes, of course. Into the recovery plan, the agency started working since before the, the summer, uh, helping and supporting the old uh, minister, minister involved in the uh, construction of the plan. There are a number of projects supposed to be inside the plan, but we know it's under discussion, so we see, obviously, because the space has a long as a, a very important possible intervention in order to put down uh, structure, infrastructure to get services for the future, making a change for our country. So the answer is yes. Uh, another point is what we can do as agency to help this, uh, this, uh, this environment. First, we need to help and to support the access of the space technologies to in the space knowledge to a larger number of researchers, entrepreneurs, startups, company, because there's a need for them to try to develop better this technology. Otherwise, we have our technology, our uh, IPR into our you know uh, table under our tables, and nobody uses it. So we have to improve this access to technologies. The second is to full cover the whole spectrum of the financial instruments. We are talking about venture capital. As Elisa and uh, Francesco know better than me, there's not enough, I mean, you have to have a lot of possible startups to get analyzed for investment. So before you have to try to multiply this opportunity try to make an accelerating program um, of uh, incubators. So, so try to bring a very new idea, to bring them to prototypes in order to, have to, to build around a small company that could be analyzed from venture capitals for investment and in their growth. After that, you have to steal uh, this company as, uh, scaled up and uh, become bigger and bigger Maybe there, are, and there, there is the need for a bigger and different instrument for their growth. And we are starting to look after to improve the corporate venture capital in Italy, which is quite uh, not, uh, you know, uh, existent, especially into the space uh, world, because uh, in the world, the corporate venture capital is uh, an important uh, financial tool, specifically for pharma, telecommunication and digital is, is used, but not in the space. And the, we see that the corporate venture capital is a key instrument for the, what we call open innovation. Uh, the, the, the last things that we have to do is to create the network of all the entities that around this uh, virtual table, for example, are speaking, but also before, because we have 
venture capital firms, uh, other public entities like GDP, foundation like the Neatech, like the Amaldi Foundation, try to bring them and to work together, not to uh, have resources going around, not with a single strategic plan. So this is the last thing I think an agency can do in the next uh, years. Other uh, things are we have to start looking about the impact on the climate change of our activities and what we can do to improve the climate change issues and also try to think about uh, some we call circular economy. Uh, right now, there's the International Space Station is uh, orbiting around us. Over there, they do circular economy. They do, and they, can, they, they don't put around anything. Everything is produced inside, and they don't put out uh, any things. So it's a circular things that we have to export to bring down into the herd. And I do another step, if I have another minute, Salvo. Now we are hearing about uh, the Artemis program. So the world led by the United States is bringing us into the moon. Uh, we hope 2024 and the, the, the next years. Uh, countries like Italy and other in Europe are joining this effort to go to the moon. And Italy has a very solid background, technology background, and companies uh, very skilled to participate to this effort. Our companies uh, will construct uh, part of the modules on the lunar uh, um, station, and they will uh, build also part of the modules that go into the moon. Once we uh, we will do we will go to the moon probably we are going there to stay there so we have to construct a moon base and once there we will have all the needs we have now into the earth so we have to look after constructions we have to look after design things we are look after to navigation food agriculture automo automotive mobility so these fields has to be filled by new companies and we are now thinking about it the big difference between uh, between the efforts we've done with the international space station when i was 20 years ago at kennedy space center working on the module to build the international space station we will we was building this this station and after we decided what to do with that research now we are planning to go to the moon and in parallel we are already starting to see what we can do into the moon with the resources and also what we can do out of the space sector. So this is the big paradigm change in this field. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mauro, for your vision. Paolo, uh, your final remark, uh, remarks. Uh, and uh, what about corporate venture capital? Just to, to drop uh, a question. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, the question to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, we, we are using, of course, we use money. <laughs> so I, I'll call you, Elisa, today in the afternoon, or okay, I, it's a, uh, who knows me, uh, knows that I'm, I like to joke, we, we, need, we need to, but anyway, we need to be in touch. Of course, we need corporate venture capitals, we use, because they are driving money, they are driving interest. Uh, into the direction of uh, of the new development, so we respect money. It's it's uh, of course uh, it's a car, <laughs> but we need cars. We use cars, so we appreciate. We use every day. So just finishing about a few uh, one minute, I think uh, we are really facing a new world. We are entering into a new world, even because the world stopped in the last 20 years and our continent Europe stopped even more and uh, our country Italy even more than the rest of Europe so we are stopped we are exactly as we were used to be in the last <laughs> millennium so new space is a huge uh, opportunity how can we think about agriculture safety, traffic, everyday life, without thinking that now we have 
we have the space and we can use the space. Uh, I'm not wondered since we work in the last 20 years, but it's time to change. It's time to change. And the very last consideration is co cooperation. The public, state, regions, municipalities, they are the community. So we have to turn back. Here with us is a, is a past minister of our state. <laughs> so we need to go back to that kind of condition to, to have uh, knowledge in the right place and industry. Of course, agriculture, vineyards, vineyards, and not only vineyards. Food maker, of course, related to agriculture, but utilities, but also car makers. So all the industries are very interested. We look the new development. We need to be in connection with our community, with the state. The very last thing is, of course, next generation fund is important. The question is, are we ready now as a state to face this opportunity? Or maybe we should drive uh, Professor Profumo back as a minister, or people as he is, those people as he is. We need to move fast and well, fast and well. We need both, absolutely. It's, uh, we don't have time to waste anymore. Okay. Thanks a lot, Paolo. Thank you. Thanks. And Francesco, I, will, I would love to, to give you all the space for a closing remarks and to, uh, to thank all the speakers and the public that followed us. Thank you. Francesco, say in mute. Echo, I will say that thank you, thank you, Salvio. We, we have a very unique chance uh, that uh, is uh, the uh, recovery fund facility. I like to call facility and not fund because this is the real uh, F. And uh, I hope that uh, we are able just to design the future of uh, uh, our country starting from this point. In order to do this and looking for this uh, space economy, uh, there is a, a like a chain uh, that we needed to follow. This means that we need, uh, first of all, to continue and to improve uh, the investment in uh, education and research. This is the basic in order to really create uh, a system in the country and in Europe, because we needed to be uh, tight linked with the Europe for, in this field. This is the first point. The second point, uh, we needed to continue to invest in the ecosystem that we were talking before. You know that we have in one side uh, the new uh, fund by Enea, Enea Tech, and the other one, and the other important step in GDP venture. This is a, an important step in order to create this ecosystem. The ecosystem needs uh, um, among the other of uh, three pillars. The first one is the knowledge. The knowledge is through research, good research in Italy and in Europe. The second ecosystem pillar is related to fund. And as we said before, we, we have this primo space and we have several different interesting funds uh, in, the, in the next uh, few years that can be established in Italy in order to attract good knowledge that is de developed in the country and the good knowledge that is coming from abroad. And the last point uh, is the, how to manage this new innovation wave. This is not uh, just uh, in, in the way that uh, is able to get results in the sense that we can create uh, hundreds of uh, startups, but uh, if we don't have uh, the ecosystem that uh, is able to go from uh, the early stage uh, funds uh, to the venture capital to the private equity, only 
starting from this point, we really to establish a new economy in this country that uh, is coming from uh, the innovation system that we have. Then uh, we need to really to uh, do a, an overall project starting from uh, education and uh, at the end uh, reaching the, uh, the, the stability in the country through the finance. Then uh, the, the, we have a lot of work to do, but in the meantime, all the seeds we have today. What we need to do is to transform ideas in operation and to have the capability of manage this complete system that has to be in the frame of one European system. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you to all the speakers and uh, to the people who followed us today, starting from this morning. See you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao. 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 Ciao.